This is a tutorial on solving quadratic equations by taking square roots. Using square roots to solve quadratic equations is a good methodology when our quadratic has no linear term. So I would use square roots to solve this x squared minus 49 is equal to 0, but I would not use it to solve this x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 because this has a linear term in it, this 2x. This 2x makes it hard to use square roots to solve for x. So if I have a quadratic equation that has no linear term, how would I use square roots to solve for my x values? Well, first let's talk about using square roots. If I have x squared is equal to 81 and I wanted to solve for x, I would just take the square root of both sides because the square root is the opposite of a square. Now if I take the square root of a square I always end up with the absolute value. So we're going to end up with the absolute value of x. And that's equal to the square root of 81 which is just 9. Now if I want to drop my absolute value on the x I have to consider both the positive and negative versions of the right hand side. So I end up with two equations x is equal to 9 and x is equal to negative 9. These are my two solutions for x squared is equal to 81. And I can also write these as x is equal to plus or minus 9. Let's look at our next example. If we have y squared is equal to 4 and I wanted to solve for y, I would take the square root of both sides. On the left hand side I'm taking the square root of a square so I end up with the absolute value of y. And then on the right hand side, the square root of 4 is just 2. Now when I drop the absolute value on the left hand side, I end up with y is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 2. So my solutions then are y is equal to plus or minus 2. Lastly, I have a squared is equal to 11. If I want to solve for a, Again, I take the square root of both sides because I have a square that I'm trying to get rid of. Here we end up with the absolute value of a, and this is equal to the square root of 11. Now 11 is not a perfect square, so if I take the square root of it, I'm going to end up with some decimal that's a little over 3. But instead of writing out the big long decimal, I'm just going to keep this as the square root of 11. Now if I want to drop the absolute value on my a, I have to consider both the positive and negative versions. So I'd have a is equal to the square root of 11 or a is equal to the negative square root of 11. So my answer then would be a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11. So now that we know how to use square roots to solve for our variables, Let's talk about using square roots to solve quadratic equations. Here I have x squared minus 5 is equal to 59. Now the first step of using square roots to solve a quadratic equation is to make it look like the other equations we were doing before. Or get your variable on one side and all your constant terms on the other side of your equal sign. So to do that, I'm going to add 5 to both sides of this equation. If I do that, I end up with x squared is equal to 64. Now to solve for x, I take the square root of both sides. I'll end up with the absolute value of x is equal to 8. Drop my absolute value and I have x is equal to 8 and x is equal to negative 8. Or x is equal to plus or minus 8. Try this again. Here I have d squared minus 16 is equal to 0. Now I want to get my variable alone on one side of the equal sign, so I'm going to add 16 to both sides, and I'll end up with d squared is equal to 16. Next, I square root both sides. I end up with the absolute value of d is equal to 4, because the square root of 16 is just 4. Drop my absolute value and I get d is equal to 4, and d is equal to negative 4. Or, I can say d is equal to plus or minus 4. 
Now the last thing we have to talk about are some of the special cases that we run into when we take square roots. Here we have the x squared is equal to negative 49. Now normally, to get rid of this square, I would just square root both sides. I'd end up with the absolute value of x is equal to the square root of negative 49. The problem is, is you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So there is no real solution to x that will give you the square root of negative 49. So I would just say there's no real solution. This can happen when you're dealing with a quadratic as well. If we have y squared plus 25 is equal to 0, remember our first step is to get our variable alone on one side of the equation. So I want to get this y squared alone. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. I'll end up with y squared is equal to negative 25. Now to get y by itself, I square root both sides, and I end up with the absolute value of y is equal to the square root of negative 25. Once again, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. So again, this would have no real solutions. And that completes the tutorial on solving quadratic equations by taking square roots.